Another kind of motion that we can study in some detail because it's relatively simple um, is motion with constant acceleration. Um, so one of the reasons why this is going to be interesting is because this shows up in a lot of real life places. So for example, um, when objects fall, we'll see that they have constant acceleration. Um, but also um, even in normal motion where you have some like more complicated thing going on, um, it's approximately true for um, pretty much any motion uh, as long as we consider a short enough amount of time. Okay, so you might remember that um, in calculus, there was a notion of local linearity, um, or you can think of the tangent line approximation. And essentially what this means is that even if you have some complicated motion, if you zoom in close enough on the graph, then it'll look like a basically straight line. And so um, constant acceleration motion is approximately true, even when it's not exactly true. Okay, so um, what I want to do is, for the case of constant acceleration, um, derive some formulas that will relate the different um, quantities that are involved in the kinematics of that. Okay, so um, if the acceleration is constant, then that means that my a of t function is just some constant, which I'll call a. So it isn't going to vary over time. It's going to always be that same amount. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to integrate both sides of this with respect to t. So the integral of a of t dt equals the integral of this constant dt. Okay. Um, and to make this concrete, I'm going to integrate from time 0 up to time delta t. Okay, so essentially, whatever time we start at, I'm just going to call 0. And then the final time, I'm just going to call delta t. This makes the math a little easier. If you started from t1 and then went to t2, you get the same result. It would just be a little more difficult algebra along the way. OK, well, the um, integral of acceleration is velocity. right? So this is going to be velocity as a function of time evaluated from time 0 to time delta t. On the right-hand side, though, I just have an integral of a constant. And so this is just going to be a t, where t is evaluated from 0 to delta t. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call v of delta t, that's the velocity at the end, I'm just going to call that v final. And then v of time 0, I'm going to call v initial. So vf and vi for final and initial velocity. And then that's going to be equal to a times delta t. All right, so this is a formula that describes motion um, when we have constant acceleration. If you know the acceleration, then you have this relationship between the velocities. Okay, so that's one. Um, and keeping in mind that the initial velocity is just some constant, that's something that you know is true at a particular time and that's never going to change, the final velocity depends on which time we're considering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as the velocity equals, um, and actually I want this to be the velocity as a function of time, equals a times delta t plus v initial. Okay, so um, this velocity as a function of time is something that changes, depends on what time we plug in, but um, it depends on the initial velocity and the acceleration and what time interval we're considering. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, integrate again. So if I integrate both sides with respect to t, then I get integral of v of t dt, again from 0 to delta t, and that's going to equal integral, so a times t, um, plus v initial dt, again from 0 to delta t. All right, so again, the reason why I'm doing it that way is so that when I integrate, um, my integration variable is the same thing that I um, have in, in my expression. Okay, so on the left-hand side, I'm going to have um, the integral of v of t is just going to be x of t. And that's going to be evaluated from t equals 0 to t equals delta t. And then on the right-hand side, well, I have a t, and I'm integrating. So this is going to be 1 half a t squared plus vi is just a constant. So vi, when I integrate it, will be vi times t. And that is all evaluated from t equals 0 to t equals delta t. OK, so what I have here then is x final minus x initial equals one half a delta t squared plus v initial times delta t. Okay, so um, that's another equation that relates together kinematic variables. And if you're a little confused by the switching back and forth between t's and delta t's, um, sometimes you will see this written with t's instead of delta t's, and that's just representing that as a function of time, the, for instance, velocities will be changing. I like to write it this way because if we think of the motion overall, then we have an initial position and, an, and a final position, an initial velocity and a final velocity, and we can use those things to, um, to solve for various parts of the motion. Okay, so um, putting these two equations together into um, one convenient form, this is the way that I like to write it. Okay, so um, the two that I would remember if I were you are, first of all, the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus a times delta t. Okay, um, and then also delta x equals one half a times delta t squared plus the initial velocity times delta t. Okay, so I like these two, um, and you know, you can use one of the other forms if you like, but I think these are the two most convenient. Okay, so notice we have five variables here. So the five variables are the final velocity, the initial velocity, delta t, delta x, 
and the acceleration. And each of these equations has four of those five in it. So if you know three, then you can find the fourth one by using the correct um, equation. So it can be tricky um, to use either of these if we happen not to know information about the time. So using algebra, you can actually solve one of these for delta t and then plug it into the other. And what you get in that case is the third um, equation that I think is worth remembering. And that is vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. Okay, so that one has no time information in it. So if you know initial and final velocity um, and you know something about the position or the acceleration, then you can find the other thing. Okay, um, it would also be possible to solve these um, equations for um, one of the other things. So we could eliminate, for instance, um, the initial velocity if we wanted, or we could eliminate the acceleration if we wanted. So you could in fact have five equations, but I think these three are the ones that I would write down and have handy for solving constant acceleration problems. Um, if you needed one of the other ones, you can just do it in two steps. So you solve for one of the pieces of information that you have, um, or solve for one of the others, and then you can find the last one with that piece of information.